Good afternoon, Pastor. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. And, uh, you know, Pastor, our last interview, yep. uh, the vaccine in 666, yep. got a good response. Here we go. And so we're going to uh, see how this goes today. Yeah. Uh, today, I want to ask you about immorality in the church. You know, uh, you mentioned on Wednesday night in your study, as you were given an example of the the gate that's made out of pearl in the New Jerusalem is 14,000, 1,400 miles high. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, as we think of any pearl in size, the work that it took, the sand, the irritation, as you mentioned, it's going to be a reminder of the of why we are in heaven. But you mentioned something that there are an exclusive group of people that will be excluded. Yep. And... Uh, and it basically comes down to those who are immoral. Yes. And you know, in Corinthians, Paul addresses immorality in the church. Has anything changed since, Pastor? Oh no, I, I I believe that what we're living in right now is very similar times to what Paul was living in. I mean, not only does he speak to the Corinthians concerning their sexual immorality, but the Ephesians, he makes it very clear to them that uh, that they too are dealing with sins of the flesh and he makes it very clear both to the Corinthians as well as the Ephesians and uh, Galatians also that <laughs> excuse me that that uh, there are going to be those who try to deceive you into thinking that these things are permissible and so Paul makes it clear he says let no one deceive you because of these things the wrath of God comes upon men let no one deceive you now where are you getting deceived you know, sometimes you get deceived just in life itself. I mean, look around you and look at the debauched um, society we live in. You know, we, we, we've had presidents who people loved and voted back into office who were having sexual dalliances in the White House and nobody cared. That shows you the kind of world we live in. And we, we have others who have held position of, of high, high esteem uh, where it's disclosed that they went to a particular island and they were having sexual relations with 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 young girls and, and and you don't hear anything on the typical news broadcast why because those things are acceptable today in the society that we live in and so that bleeds into the church and so we have people who are are professing Christians who will go to a church and and never even hear a message that warns them of the repercussions for sexual sin. And yet when you close the book of Revelation, the final book of testimony, the last time that Jesus Christ is given an invitation in Revelation at the end of the age and everything that we're supposed to be aware of all these things, he says that uh, those who are outside are the dogs and he calls, he speaks of the sexually immoral and the, the idolaters, the, the drug users. He speaks of all of them. And he says, these are not entering in. And so, yeah, we have that. We have that awareness that in the church today with the, um, the trivializing of sexual behavior, where people will, even in my fellowship over time, I've had this happen more than once, where someone introduces me to whom they refer to as their fiance. You never say that to me without me wondering, what do you mean by that? And every time I've heard that, they're living together. So they try and justify it. <clears throat> or you have somebody who has been um, going through divorce for even biblical reasons, they're going through divorce, there was immorality involved, and yet they're not divorced and they're out there dating and wanting to get engaged and have a new relationship when they haven't even closed the door on the last one. And for them, they wonder, um, What's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it is this. If you can't marry them, why can't you marry them? Oh, I'm already married. If you can't marry them, what gives you the right to date them? And the thing that I think concerns and saddens, even grieves me, is that the young woman or the young man, whatever, that they're dating doesn't see that as being wrong. They're, well, they're already, you know, not in love anymore and love is stopped and they make excuses but if you're not legally capable of marrying somebody you are not morally capable of dating them why don't they see that so yes that's in the church today and so 
this Sunday we'll be talking a little bit about that. That's not going to be the whole portion of my message. But Jesus says, outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the sexually, sexually immoral, immoral, the idolaters, murderers. And he gives a list, not a not an exhaustive one, but a list to, to give us the, the sense of those who are excluded from the kingdom of God. Pastor, would you say that, uh, pro, that, that immorality that has even crept in more, it's always been in the church, has it given a casual attitude in living a holy life? Well, I don't think that people see holy life for what it is. I think that sometimes people, as a matter of fact, I know that sometimes people think a holy life is a boring life, you know? And if, if, if you think that being separate from sin and living in a way that pleases God, that enables God or it opens the door for God's blessings in your life, if you think that's boring, heaven's not for you. <laughs> heaven's not for you, you know, because that's what heaven is it, it's the only those who are holy who've been made holy by by god himself only the holy the, the pure are entering into the kingdom of god and so there's the uh, the reality of what holiness is in terms of being set apart for the things of the lord and living a godly life and all the things that relate to that but that's a life that you're already living now as a christian or you should be because Peter said it that way. He said, he is holy. And even as he is holy, you also be holy. So it, it's, it's speaking concerning a, uh, a morality that is spiritually empowered, that demonstrates that you are set apart and that you're pursuing the things that are pleasing to God. And so there's a casual indifference today where somebody will come to church and uh, after church to go out and have a barbecue and and they're drinking their beer and they're carrying on as if they didn't even go to church. I have a friend of mine in this, in our fellowship, a mutual friend who told me he can't go out with his friends from uh, another fellowship who profess to love Jesus and all of that. But he says, I can't. He says, I was a drunk and I go to their house and before you know it, they're offering me a beer with my steak. He says, I can't do that. He says, I, I don't wanna go back to that old world. Oh, they'll say, this is all grace. It's all grace. God's grace wasn't given to me to practice the things that Jesus died on the cross to set me Amen. free from. Amen. And I don't think the church understands that, John. Or, uh, a good amount don't understand that. Sobering to understand to see that happening uh, around. It is. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for this time. And, and again, this is a, gives us a segue to this Sunday. Yeah. You'll be sharing at the last... Few, chat, few verses of the it's book the of Revelation. Verses. It's the last invitation. From the last invitation of Christ. Yeah. And so we look forward to having you guys join us. It's Sunday, 8.30 a.m. and 10.45. And then we have our men's conference this Saturday. Men want to come out. Even as Pastor was talking about their immorality in the church, or we're talking about, men, we have no excuses, no excuses. not to live a godly life. So, men, we have day of tickets available that uh, Saturday, this Saturday morning at 8 a.m., Come join us. The conference starts at 9. If you purchased your breakfast ticket, we'll have a, a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m. And Pastor David will be kicking off the, the conference. So, men, we look forward to joining you. Rest of the church family, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. And after the conference, we have oh, tacos yes. available. Yes. After the conference, we're <laughs> going to have tacos available. So come and join us. Love to have you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you soon. God bless you. Amen.